the end of yesterday's videos, I told you that the atmosphere around us is always pushing down with one atmosphere of pressure or about 100,000 pascals of pressure. So I'm going to teach you now to calculate what's called the absolute pressure of something. That's the pressure that you might push on something added to how much the atmosphere is already pushing on it. So for example, if you stood up on a table, the table already had the atmosphere of Earth pushing down on it. And now we would add the pressure of you pushing down on it to get what's called the absolute pressure. So it's the pressure of you pushing down plus the pressure that the atmosphere already put on it. And you'll use this formula, absolute pressure P measured in pascals equals the initial pressure, which is usually one atmosphere, because we're usually just talking about something on Earth that already had atmospheric pressure on it, plus rho GH. And this rho GH is technically referred to as the gauge pressure. So if we wanted to get a device that could measure pressure, we would hope that if we just sat it down with nothing on it, it would measure zero, just like you would need a balance or a bathroom scale to measure zero with nothing on it. So we have the gauge not measure the pressure from the atmosphere around us. We have the gauge measure only what's added, so you standing on top of the table in the example from before. Uh, these variables here are just like in yesterday's video. The density of the fluid is, or whatever, is kilograms per meters cubed. should be cubed. So that's rho. G is about 10 meters per second squared, and then h is the height of the fluid, because as we talked about a lot in class, height is what matters when determining the pressure from a fluid. So let's look at an example of how we might use the formula for absolute pressure. In this example, we're going to have a water tank up on a cliff, and this is actually how the system for delivering water to your house works. We have water towers, so this would be a tower instead of up on some rocks. And we're going to find the absolute pressure of the water that enters the house right here, 30 meters below the water tank. And we're also going to find out if we put a little pressure gauge right here, so kind of like what you stick on your car tires. If we put that little gauge right there, we want to know what would the gauge read. And we're going to find that out as well. Okay, I'm going to minimize this so we can work out this problem. All right, so the problem says... What is the absolute pressure at the house? And I just showed you the formula for absolute pressure. That is P equals P naught, which is generally the pressure from Earth's atmosphere, plus the gauge pressure, rho G H. And yesterday, I told you about the density of water, which if you have not memorized at this point, you should go ahead and take a minute and do so now. So I'm going to list our givens. First of, all, first of all, initial pressure would be about one atmosphere, which is about 10 to the fifth pascals. Rho for water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Again, if you haven't memorized that yet from using it in class, take a second. You need to come in tomorrow having it memorized. You can count on that being a reading quiz question. Um, we know G on Earth, 10 meters per second squared, and we know the height given in the problem, 30 meters. Just wrote all that, all that out so I don't have to look back at the problem and kind of pick it out of the picture. So now I'm finding P. This is the thing I want to know. Absolute pressure for part A. So part A, my absolute pressure would be 10 to the fifth pascals plus 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed times 10 meters per second squared g on earth times the height 30 meters. So I just filled in this equation right here. 10 to the fifth pascals by the way would be 1 followed by 5 zeros 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's see what we get. When I do all of that I get that this right side over here is 300,000 pascals and so my absolute pressure is 100,000 plus 300,000 would be 400,000 pascals. That's part A. Part B, what is the gauge pressure of the house? Well, we've actually already found this. This right side of the equation, rho gh, 
This is the gauge pressure. Remember that from yesterday. So that's the gauge pressure. And we've already got that over here. We found out our rho g h is 300,000 pascals. So that's part B, and that's part A. And that's how you use this. So the actual pressure at the house is 400,000 pascals, but that includes the fact that the Earth's atmosphere is already pushing on that water. If we just want to know what a gauge would read, and gauges on Earth are generally set to read zero when nothing's attached to them, so the gauge would ignore the atmosphere of the Earth and just read 300,000 pascals as far as the pressure of water coming into the house. So that's kind of how you use this here. It's to differentiate whether we're including atmospheric pressure. If we are, we do p, p naught one atmosphere, plus rho gh. And if we're not including atmospheric pressure, we just do rho gh. A problem would say absolute pressure or pressure including the atmosphere if it wanted absolute pressure. And if it just says what would a gauge read if you stuck it on the house, it wants rho gh. All right, let's look at a conceptual example now. Which of these two dams would need to be built stronger? We have one that has a large but shallow lake, um, and that dam would be three meters high. Then we have another dam built for a small but deep pond, deep being six meters, so deeper than the three meter lake. Hopefully a question will pop up here. Take a second. Which dam needs to be built stronger? OK. Let's look at the right answer. What I'm going to show you on this next screen is an actual data readout where I took a fish tank that's not very deep, filled it with water. It's a very wide fish tank, so it would simulate this one here. This would be our fish tank, wide but not very deep. And then I took a tennis ball container, which is much deeper than the fish tank, but not very wide. And that will simulate our small, deep pond. That will be the tennis ball container. Container. And I'm going to show you the data for when I had the computer measure the pressure at the bottom of both of those. Okay, the green is the deeper tennis ball container, so this is the tennis ball container, that is very narrow but deep. So that tennis ball container is narrow but deep, and that would simulate our six meter lake. Then we have the red line here, which is the fish tank, which is not very deep but very wide. Okay, and that would simulate our three meter deep dam that we need to build. Well, at the bottom of the two dams, the six meter container had more pressure than the three meter container. So the tennis ball container, even though it had very little water in it, had more pressure, and the fish tank, which had much more water in it, had very little pressure. Hopefully another question will pop up here. Why did, one, why did the smaller container have more pressure than the wider container? Well, the answer is, when we're just talking about gauge pressure, so what the computer would measure, it's programmed to ignore the atmosphere, it uses rho g h. That is the gauge pressure. Now, both of them contain water, so that's going to stay the same. They're both on Earth, so the gravity will stay the same. The thing that's different about them is the height of the water. So even though the six meter container was very thin, its water was higher than the three meter container. It is the height that determines how much pressure there is from the water. And so of course, the tennis ball container would have more pressure. So to answer our original question, it is the small but deep pond that will need the stronger dam because the height of the water from the bottom of that pond is more than the height for the shallow lake. So the shallow lake will not need a very strong dam because according to our expression for pressure, rho gh, smaller height, smaller pressure. But the deep pond, bigger height, 
bigger pressure. So that's a really important thing to take away from this, that the height of the water or the fluid or whatever is what determines how much pressure there is coming from the water or the fluid or the whatever. So remember, it is the height that determines the pressure. And that is it for absolute pressure.